Yes. So welcome, everybody, to yet another live interview show today with Become a Fitness Father and Tom Sylvester. And I'm looking forward to this. It Absolutely. Me too. Forward. So lifestyle builders, man, let's start off with that. What are the keys to living your ideal lifestyle? Absolutely. Well, first off, thanks for having me here. Um, anytime I get the chance to talk to other fathers, like it's huge because there are a lot of challenges. And I don't think the father, the dad population is as well served as a lot of the mom population out there. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks for having me here. I love what you're doing with the show. So uh, lifestyle builder, really the key is figuring out and taking some time to think about what is it you want your life to look like? so that you can start not only living pieces of that today, but intentionally work towards building that ideal lifestyle for yourself. Mm -hmm. And what happens oftentimes is that people go through that traditional path. And for most people, that is go to high school, get good grades so you can get into college, get into a lot of debt, go find a job, hopefully, and work for 45 years, saving money for retirement the whole time, and then hopefully live your life in retirement, ideally. But what we found and what we've done is we've really like bucked that trend and said, you know what, why should we have to wait and follow that traditional path? Why not start living our ideal lifestyle now? So what it really comes down to is taking some time to intentionally say, where am I today? It's just like a GPS, right? What's my starting point where I am today? What's the destination? Where do I want to get to? And then building a roadmap that you can follow and adjust along the way to make sure that you're living your ideal life now and making intentional decisions that will allow you to continue living that life later on. Mm. Nice. I like the way to start with that. And I decided, you know what, because I saw it before you had your, your website on your profile page and I decided, Hey, I got this new software. I got to try yeah, it out. I was gonna say, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> All right. I thought it was nice too. So I thought I share it in the beginning so people can check it out right away. And I will share it again at the end when we're going to ask you how to get um, in contact with you, how to follow you, etc. So now people know Tom and Ariana.com. I already saw it has a beautiful picture of the whole family on there, right? Yep. Just yep. the way you like it. And I see the book in the back. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. But this was a great start. Now, Tom, share with us, please. What's your your story and um, not just yours, but what's the story of the family as well? I'm always interested in, you know, what's the setup and et cetera. Absolutely. So, so I'll start with where we're at today. Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife and I both turn 35 this year. And that's a big number for us because years ago, uh, we actually met the very first day of college. And mm. as we were getting ready to graduate college, I was looking ahead and I was like, you know, I don't like the path that's laid out in front of me. And so I didn't know really how I was going to make it happen. But I said, you know, I want to retire by 35. And at that point, I basically figured, you know, it's long enough to let me figure out how to make that happen, but not too long that I won't be able to enjoy life. And so when I told Ariana this, she was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, she was like, yeah, this is probably just another one of your crazy ideas. You'll let it go, you know, in a couple of months, uh, except I didn't. <laughs> so when I got out of school, I was constantly trying to figure out, OK, how can we start making money and building wealth so that we can make that a reality? And I did what most people do when they start. You know, you start looking at what successful people are doing and what opportunities are out there. And I tried a whole bunch of things. I tried investing in the stock market until I realized it's very complicated. And we were fresh out of college with a whole bunch of debt. So we didn't have money to invest. Um, I tried multi-level marketing. That wasn't a good fit for me. You know, I tried um, getting into real estate investing and uh, Ariana and I at the time were renting an apartment. So I said, you know what? What if we bought a duplex? We could live in one half and essentially rent an apartment like we are now. We would rent the other half out and then we would live very low cost. So I thought this was the best idea. I approached her and she wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> and so um, I was getting frustrated because I'm like, you know, if, if every time I try to do something, she shuts it down. How am I ever going to make this happen? And so I was leaving work one night and I heard a in, uh, ad on the radio that basically said, Hey, you know, are you looking to build your ideal life? You know, do you want to do it with real estate? Come to this free seminar. 
So uh, I went to the seminar. It was a two hour seminar that um, they then sold you into a three day seminar. So I went to a three day seminar and then they wanted to sell you into these like quote unquote advanced training courses. And at that point, you know, we're like two hundred thousand dollars in debt. And I'm like, yeah, there's no way I can afford this. Um, but as I was like walking out of the room, I'm like, man, if I don't make this work, I I'm never going to get there. And so with like a snap decision and after three days of them selling us into it, um, I ended up spending about $7,500 on a credit card to buy this training uh, without telling Ariana about nine months before we were getting married. Oof. <laughs> yeah. So if you want a, a, a series of steps not to take, just listen to my story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I finally told her, you know, that was probably the, the first really tough part of our relationship because for the years prior to that, everything was great. And then what that forced us to do is really sit down and say, okay, like what's going on? Clearly this is not just something that I'm going to let go. And, um, you know, we really had to talk about what the future looked like and what we wanted it to look like. And, um, you know, those are some really difficult conversations, but what started, uh, emerging from that was the fact that, we had a, a same view on what we wanted the future to look like. What we disagreed on or had different opinions on was how we were going to get there. You know, mm -hmm. she was still on that traditional path of, well, we both just graduated from college. Let's get jobs. Let's save money and we'll make it happen that way. Whereas I was on this other path of saying, well, let's take the money we have, invest in businesses and actually get there faster so that we'll be able to create our ideal life and not have to worry about jobs or any of the other stuff. So once we figure that out, this led us on uh, a path of continuously clarifying where we wanted to go and how we were going to get there. And then ultimately, we started a real estate investing business because we had to pay that money back. And then um, over time, you know, when we were having our first child, we started a wine and liquor store. And it, at the same time, I was also working a full time job, as, as was she. Mm -hmm. And so when we did that and we had our daughter, Basically, what we figured out was she could actually leave her job and stay home with our daughter and help me with the businesses and the businesses could pay her income. So mm -hmm. when we figured that out, it was like, great, we're, we're halfway there. We're now starting our family. Ariana has been able to leave her job. So now we just got to work on getting me out of my job. And so at that point, I ended up shifting into um, business consulting. And so I was working with a consulting company and I was flying all over the United States working with all of these Fortune 500 companies. What I figured out, though, was that as we as our daughter was growing up and then as we had our son a couple of years later, I was away more than I was home. And as a father, that killed me because I felt like I was seeing my kids grow up through Facebook and through videos. <laughs> and so Ariana and I, you know, sat back down and had our conversations and we said, you know, is this the life that we're trying to build? And the answer was clearly no. And so at that point, we said, you know, OK, well, we've got to make a shift then. So I ended up leaving my very well paying consulting job and we started living off the businesses. And around the same time, we had started having people reach out to us and they said, you know what? We see that you guys are raising your family. We see that you guys have built multiple businesses and we see that you guys have been able to leave your jobs. Like, can you help us do the same thing? And so what we realized was that even though we didn't really think it was too incredible, it was just kind of like what we were doing. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of other people wanted to learn how to do that. And so we started Lifestyle Builders, which was really helping people build businesses, but not just for the sake of building a business and, and making money, but really intentionally building a business so that you could provide for your family and build that ideal lifestyle for yourself. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Um ask about that because what's what's then because i'm assuming that that created this coaching business right yep what's then for the people that come to you and ask like see no let me let me back up for one second because you probably get this right and and the reason why i want to back up is because it just entered in my head i'm listening to uh, an audiobook of vincent pugliese and um a free, freelance to to freedom um, yep. and and he says, like, uh, in one story that he got approached by this lady who wanted to go into the same business as they were, but she was looking for, like, you know, that. <laughs> she was looking for, like, that golden nugget that doesn't exist, that was just going to instantly have her successful business, right? So how does it look like 
because people look at you probably and they think, wow, I want that too. And I think that is really easy. But you just mentioned like your whole background story. It's been like, it's been a story, right? It's not been yeah, a story. Like one day you go to bed, the next day you wake up and whoa, now I'm, I'm, I'm living the lifestyle that I want. So what is that um, road, that journey? What does that look like for somebody that asks you? What are the steps that you teach them to make sure that they get into that lifestyle that, that they Absolutely. want? Absolutely. So um, when I took on my first coaching client after leaving uh, the corporate consulting world, uh, he was a e-commerce seller and I was, you know, he was basically $40,000 in debt because he bought all of his merchandise on a credit card that he was then going to resell. And so I uh, ended up working with him for about a year. And over that time, he ended up helping him build a million dollar business. Nice. And so, so that was pretty amazing. I was like, you know, this is great. Like I left corporate consulting. I want to work with entrepreneurs and now I'm doing it and I'm really making a difference. And so, um, and he was on his path. He ended up moving his family to Barcelona, which was where they wanted to live. Uh, you know, everything was going good until a couple months later when he reached back out to me and he said, you know, he, he was all frantic and he's like, you know, Tom, I, I need your help. And I'm like, what, what's going on, man? We'll figure it out. And he's like, you know, my wife left me and she took the kids back to the US. Oh, nice. And and that was like a punch in the gut because I was like, you know, I spent all this time helping this guy build a business and I, I saw the signs along the way, but I wasn't intentional about helping him build the business in a way that allowed his family not to suffer and ultimately mm -hmm. lead to this divorce. And so that really like was a punch in the gut. And, and I spent a lot of time with Ariana afterwards. And I said, you know what? I, I don't know if this is good. Like, I don't want to help people succeed in one area of, of life and then fail in another. And so after that, what we really figured out was we needed to help people first get their life in order and then build a business to support it. So the process that we take people through is actually, and it's in our book, like our book is laid out this way. The process we take people through is the very first part is figuring out what you want out of your life. And so we take people through this two page life planner that helps them figure out what do they want their life to look like? Like what's their family mission? What do they want their family to look like? Why? What's the purpose of that? What is the vision for the future? And we break that up in four categories. What things do you want? What experiences do you want? And those are the two things that most people focus on initially because you want to take care of your family. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into what relationships do you want and then what impact do you want to make? And so when people lay that out, we then help them build a roadmap to go from here's where you're at now and here's where you want to be so that you get the steps along the way to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And part of that is also figuring out your personal finances. How much money is coming in? Where's that money going? And are you putting that money into savings and into investments that will help you get there? So a lot of people are really surprised when they come to work with us because they come to us for business help. But the first handful of things that we take them through is helping them really get their life in order. And once they do that, and once they know what they want their future life to look like, then we help them design the right type of business and business model to make that a reality. So a lot of people to your point are jumping in and like, I just want to make money or I want to make this happen quick. And to be honest, a lot of those people don't end up working with us. The people that come to us are the ones that have usually bought one or two other courses or worked with like other people. And they realize that all the promises that were made to them, like you can make a uh, hundred thousand dollars in 90 days aren't really true. It does take time. And so when we wrote the book, one of the things we did was we decided we wanted to write it together. And mm. at the beginning of every section, we actually tell a story from our journey. And what's cool about it is that I tell the story from my perspective. And then right after Ariana tells the same story from her perspective. So what you get is real life ex examples of what this looks like from a family going through it as well as two very different perspectives. My perspective of the entrepreneur that's trying to make this happen and Ariana's perspective of the reluctant entrepreneur, the spouse that really isn't interested. And what's crazy is that it's the same circumstance, but you see two very different takes on it because you get each of our perspectives. Hmm. I like that. People can't see my face, but I'm just nodding. And, and <laughs> I'm sometimes because it's like, yep, know that one. <laughs> Been there. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. And, you know, and a lot of people we talk to, that's the same thing. They're like, you know, it, it sounds like you guys are us or it sounds like you're talking to us. And that's uh -huh. the, one of the things we realized is that for most couples, there's usually one person that's content with that traditional path. And there's usually one person that something happens, you know, a, a bad day at the job, they lose their job. Um, they wake up one day and realize that they've gone through a big portion of their life and they're not where they wanted to be. So they get this spark and they're suddenly like, I, I want to do something different. And what they often don't do, which is what I didn't do very well, was they've had this epiphany and they had a journey to get to that epiphany. But then they go to their spouse and they're like, you should, we're, we're going to do this. And they think the spouse should have the epiphany right away rather than helping their spouse go on their own journey to get to that epiphany so that you can work on it together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're expecting them to go, Whoa, that's great. That's amazing. Great idea. And they're just saying like, uh huh. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. You know, I support you. <laughs> you're sitting there like, Dude, I'm so excited about this. Why can't you share this with no one? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, we're still on that. My wife still does a nine to five. I'm doing the entrepreneur stuff. And I've accepted the fact that it's not her journey. And that's okay. Right. And, you that's, know, that's and, cool. and that's and that's huge. And and to be honest, when you have somebody in a nine to five and you're an entrepreneur, there's so many benefits. You know, like depending on where you live, health insurance could be a huge issue being an entrepreneur. Someone's in a nine to five, that's usually covered. Um, having that stable income while you're trying to get the business going, because it always takes longer than you think it will. Yep. You know, and especially if that's their path, it lets you each play your own role towards where you want to go. Like we've had people that have worked with us that actually after starting their business decided they wanted to go back and get a job because mm -hmm. that provided their ideal lifestyle. So mm -hmm. even though we talk a lot about entrepreneurship, it really comes down to like our tagline, your life, your business, your way. It's figuring out what is going to support you and then doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And um, we've actually had like some of our clients, you know, both people left their jobs, started the business. And then one decided they actually enjoyed the structure and schedule of being an employee. So one went back to work nine to five and the other one did the business. So uh, the thing that a lot of people think with entrepreneurship is they're like, oh, we hear these things about like, you know, jump off the cliff and you'll build your plane on the way down or, you know, burn the boats and go all in. And if you have a family, you have responsibilities. So mm -hmm. you can't just like leave a job and figure it out along the way. So a big thing that we tell people to do, and that's why we want people to get their life and their finances in order. Mm -hmm. And one of the, t the activities we actually take them through is this, uh, what we call the runway calculator. Mm -hmm. And what this thing will do is you can put in uh, your income, your spouse's income, your savings, and then how much money your business is making. And then you put in the date that you want to leave your job. And what it will do is basically calculate if you left your job on this date, how many months would you have to build your business up so that it replaces your income? Mm -hmm. And so in the ideal world, your business replaces your job income before you leave. But for most people, that's not practical. So what we do with people is we help them model that out because mm -hmm. if somebody only has three months, that's not going to be enough time and they shouldn't leave. So when you kind of know some of these numbers, you can now be a lot more intentional about your finances and when you decide to take that leap and become a full-time entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that comes the fact that, you know, actually my wife is one of that 20, 30% that loves her job. Right. Which so is great. Job and I'm like, look, that's awesome. I, I, I kept in the beginning, I was just, Dumbass, right? <laughs> now you're like, she's really good. Like, if a client comes, if, if you're upset, right, with the company, or whatever, and you're like steaming, you call, she picks up. But when you leave, you're happy, right? That's she's right. that good. So I keep telling her, you should start for your own, right? Because her company is like a little, hmm. you start, for, but that's not her. So now it's like, look, you enjoy your job. Fantastic. I'm so proud of you. Keep going, and, and we'll see what happens in the future where my. When become a fierce father explodes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and that's really the key. You know, like what I always tell people is your goal is to provide yourself and your family with as many options as possible. Mm. Because when you have options, something happens and now you have an alternative. Like mm -hmm. we get to really tough spaces when we only have one option and that option maybe was good for a while and suddenly it's not. 
So the point of, for example, building a business on the side is to give you another option compared to that job. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people assume that like they hate their job, therefore they should become an entrepreneur. That's not a good answer. Like if you hate your job, go find a job that you enjoy, you know, because becoming an entrepreneur is one of the most challenging things. It's going to require you to do a lot of personal growth and development. You know, you're likely going to be working a lot for next to nothing or minimum wage. And eventually when you get all the pieces coming together, it can be phenomenal. But what most mm -hmm. people don't realize is they think that right away, they're going to be able to make it all work. And that's usually not the case. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what I want to ask you about, because as you know, within, um, you know, building your lifestyle, there's a lot of challenges. Have you seen like, okay, every single time that we've talked with, a. uh, uh, one of our clients or one of the people that are following us and interested in what we're doing and what their like main challenge is or like main two, three challenges that always keep coming up. Yeah. The, the first one that people always identify is I don't have time. And this is especially relevant for families because you know, people, you know, especially like if you're, if you're married or in a relationship, if you have kids, you know, there's that saying that we all have 24 hours and it's true. But when you have those additional responsibilities, that 24 hours usually gets eaten up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, the other challenge that most people have, especially when they're looking to become an entrepreneur, is that financially they're not at the place they want to be. You know, they're, you know, usually living paycheck to paycheck or maybe they move beyond that. Um, they likely have debt that they want to pay off and they're looking at starting a business as a way to do that. So one of the first things that we help people with is to essentially do an audit, do an audit of your time, see where, where you're spending. Like literally we have people track their time for a week and then go back and look at it afterwards. And you know, when we talked about that life planner earlier, when you have your life plan and then you do a time audit, what you can then do is say, okay, where I'm spending my time, is that directly relating to what I want my life to look like? And if the answer is no, now you can start to say, what do I got to shift or change in where I'm spending my time in order to live closer and more intentionally with my ideal life? It's the same thing with money. When you go through and say, all right, how much money comes in every month? How, where do we spend all that money? You go back and look and say, is this living intentionally with the life I want to live? And mm -hmm. for a lot of people, they don't like having to quote unquote cut things out or live by a budget. But the reality is it's less about living by a budget and more about being intentional with where you want to spend your money and then spending your money in that way. So what a lot of people do when they go through and do a time audit and a, a money audit is they basically figure out that there's a lot of time being spent on stuff that they really don't enjoy and it isn't giving them their ideal lifestyle. The same thing with money. There's a lot of like leaks where money just kind of disappears or they spend it on things that they don't really value. Mm -hmm. So when you get those two things in order, usually a lot of other stuff then opens up from there because you have more time to do the things you want to do, be it start a business, be it spend more time with your family, be it spend more time on hobbies. You also have more money available to either invest, to spend it on your family, to create some of those experiences or buy some of those things you want. So most people just haven't been intentional with where they're spending their time, their money, and their energy. And once you bring that awareness and then help them figure out what tweaks can I start making to live more intentionally, that gives them a lot more space and a lot more options for whatever they want to do. Exactly, exactly. Well said. Um, in that regards, I wanted to say, um, because you're, you're a dampener, right? Um, people, we're talking about challenges, people coming to you, they have their challenges. Uh, you just mentioned like two big challenges that everybody pretty much is facing. And they look at you and they're like, wow, you're so far ahead. And what I've seen a lot is that those people that are trying to make a quick buck, right? That's trying to make money, like the people that you just mentioned, right? They've been to courses, they, they've spent their money, they got absolutely no value, and then they finally come to you. Um, but those people, they don't have any more challenges. They're like perfect, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you start laughing, so I know that you've seen it, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But so people understand, what are some of the challenges that, that you are facing at the moment, um, at the, you know, at the lifestyle that you've built for yourself? 
Absolutely. It's, it's a great question because to your point, a lot of people will see myself or us and other successful people and just assume that like everything's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm actually going to step back. So last year, Ariana and I, when we were kind of looking at our life plan, you know, we said, all right, based on everything we're seeing, like, what do we want our theme to be this year? Like, what do we really want to focus on? And we said our theme was going to be to put ourselves first. You know, after years of building the three businesses, after years of raising our two kids, so they're um, seven and four, by the way, just to give people context. And um, after several years of me traveling across the country and really not being around, we said, you know, we've been putting everything like we, we always focus on ourselves, but not nearly enough. So we said, we're going to really put ourselves first. We're going to put ourselves first with our health. We're going to put ourselves first with our mental health, with our relationship, uh, with our kids. And so one of the things we started doing was actually going to see a marriage therapist. And it's funny because there's such a stigma around Mm -hmm. uh, counselors and therapy and all of that. But the way we looked at it was the things that are important to us, we invest in, you know, we invest time, money, and energy. So if you want to build a successful business, you're going to invest in courses or coaches or books to help you with that. If you want to be a star athlete, you're going to invest in training and coaches. And, you know, to us, it was like, well, what's more important than our marriage? Let's invest in that. Mm. And so we, we were going through that and that's been phenomenal. It's helped us both realize things about ourselves and about each other that we didn't realize before. Uh, It's helped us communicate better. And it actually helped Ariana realize that she had had some fears uh, that was actually like causing a lot of the issues that we were running into. Mm -hmm. And so we, we still do our, we were doing that like once a month. Uh, We still do uh, a couples therapy now once every 90 days. But what that's allowed Ariana to do is now and go seek individual therapy to, really figure out like what are some of those fears that were holding her back? And then ultimately what, what is her identity? Who does she want to be? Because this challenge that a lot of people don't realize with entrepreneurs for the longest time, you're in this survive mode. You're trying to make money. You're trying to take care of your family. And when you get to a point where you've now been able to do that, you sometimes get lost and a lot of people don't have pity for people because they're like, Oh, well you're now successful. Like everything's worked out. And it's like, yeah, but you got to have an additional meaning because you want to, you need to be able to shift from just surviving into thriving. And a lot of times what that requires is personal growth and looking beyond just yourself and your family and looking at the legacy you want to live the relationships that you want to deepen with people that matter to you and Mm. the impact that you want to be able to have on other people. And so a a big challenge we've gone through recently has been her working through to figure out who she is. And my biggest challenge personally related to that is I'm a problem solver. Like I'm a quick start entrepreneur. I see a problem. I'm going to go fix it. And it's been a real challenge for me to be able to step back and be the supportive husband and not try to push her or not try to solve her problems. And um, what's really cool about this is that even though we work together on our businesses, we've now been able to each kind of come out and say, all right, here's Tom and Ariana together, but here's Tom and some of the stuff Tom's really good at and wants to focus on. And here's Ariana and some of the stuff she wants to do. So she's really been going through this journey of really figuring out who she is and how she wants to, what her legacy is, And um, like I said, my biggest challenge has been trying to support her with that without taking it over or pushing her further. Yeah, you definitely hit the nail on the head there. Um, Not even sure if it's just entrepreneurs. It might just be something that men do, right? We just like to take action as soon as our women come. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to try that. And she's just sitting there like, dude, I just want to talk. <laughs> I just yeah. want to hear. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, one of, and, and I don't do it perfect every time, mm. but I'm getting better and better at it. When she comes to me, whereas I used to just jump in and start solving the problem. I now ask one very important question. What do you need from me right now? Do you mm. need me to just listen and support or do you want me to solve the problem? And by simply asking that question, now I'm able to step into the role that I need to for her. 
you know, mm. whereas before it was just automatically jump in, try to solve the problem. And then usually that would lead to more disagreements than agreements. That is one heck of a powerful question. Yeah. What do you need from me right now? I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yep. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, and, and it is tough. I, like when uh, I first... When I first heard about this and I did it, I was like, this is amazing. And then we would do something later on. I would dive into solving the problem. And then I was like, I have this amazing question that works so well. Why didn't I do it? And it, it really is like retraining yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one things that we, one of the things we got from our marriage counselor is she's like, you know, when you guys are in the situation, you kind of see some of this disagreement going on or whatever else. She says, have a phrase or have something that immediately you both know is like, hey, we're in this like wrong place. Let's acknowledge it and get right. And so for us, it's called, it's purple banana. So when we're talking, somebody says purple banana and two things happen. One, we both just laugh because it's the most ridiculous phrase ever. But without saying anything else, we both realize that, hey, we're in this like bad place or we're, we're not going down a good path. Let's just take a, a couple minutes to kind of regroup and then get back on like a more positive path. So mm -hmm. that's been another big thing for us too, is having that phrase that, you know, lightens the mood as well as then helps us kind of get refocused. Exactly. As soon as you was talking about that, I got the word peaches in my head. So you say <laughs> banana made me laugh even louder. People, by the way, there you go from ice age, right? When she's, yep. breaking, she's walking there <laughs> and she's supposed to scream peaches and she yells out all the kinds of fruit. They should I love it. Purple banana. <laughs> jazz, he would have been up that mountain way faster. <laughs> yep. Anyway, that's great, man. So now I got three really good questions that I'm asking myself. So there one you go. I've learned is what can you teach me today, right? That's always a nice one. And uh, the other one that I ask myself now when I wake up um, in regards to improving our relationship is how can I serve my wife today? And especially how can I serve her today without expecting anything in return? So the question is good, but what we do as men most of the times, maybe not just men, maybe just everybody, we do stuff, right? And then we expect something in return. And yeah. that's, uh, you know, I, I love that question. Um, one of the mastermind groups I'm in, uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're entrepreneurs, but they're all fathers and they're all husbands. Mm -hmm. And when we start the mastermind group off, the first question that we each go around and answer is how am I serving my wife and how am I serving my family? And so that keeps us focused on one, being intentional about that, but then two, sharing that and reflecting on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was so cool when we put this together and started doing that because it's a business mastermind. And very often people, when they go into that, they're just thinking business. But one of the things that we've incorporated into everything we do is work-life integration. And so a lot of people are trying to do this like work-life balance thing. And one, it's a myth. And two, it's really, uh, it really comes out of like people that have jobs because it's like when I'm here, I'm at my job and when I'm here, I'm at home. But uh, like, I think everyone should strive for this. And especially as entrepreneurs, it's less about balancing everything and it's more about integrating it all. So one of the things is that you really can't talk business without talking life. And that's one of our really core philosophies is that the principles that work in one work in the other, and you need to make sure that those both are in alignment and supporting each other. So that question is an amazing one for people to ask themselves. Perfect explanations on that. So let me ask you this then, because you're saying entrepreneur every time, right? I don't use that word anymore because for me, it's dadpreneur, right? There you go. Entrepreneur for me, it's not going to entrepreneurs everybody's like entrepreneur is really difficult and blah blah i'm like man entrepreneur stuff is easy be a dadpreneur and then we'll talk right <laughs> so I'm, I'm teasing my entrepreneur friends i don't have kids yet <laughs> mm -hmm. stop whining stop talking to me when you got two kids right so what's your what's your idea of what does it mean to be a dadpreneur yeah you know we we've struggled with this for a while and i think what it really comes down to is your reason for your business. And if you talk to most dadpreneurs, mompreneurs, and you ask them why they started the business, the majority of them are going to tell you it's because they wanted to take care of their family. You know, they mm -hmm. wanted to provide their family with a, a better life. And it's not to say that 
non-parent entrepreneurs don't have the same intentions, but it's definitely different when you have kids. And so one of the challenges that Ariana and I actually faced early on was that we knew we wanted to have kids. And when we started looking around for people that we could learn from or look up to as we became entrepreneurs and wanted to become parents, there wasn't very many people talking about that. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge challenge for us. And one of the reasons I think a lot of people are attracted to us is because we do talk about that. You know, it's not just talking about business, but it's saying we're we're building this business not only to solve the problem of our customers and serve them, not only to support our team and help them build their ideal lifestyle, but we're ultimately doing this to take care of our family. And an important part of that is making sure that you're putting your priorities first which means you should be putting your family first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, really frustrates me is when I see people and they're like, you know, you got to hustle, hustle, you got to grind, you've got to sacrifice, you know, work all these hours in your business. And then, you know, you'll, when you're successful, then you'll come back to your family. And I think a core difference with dadpreneurs, mompreneurs is we're, we're not going to do that. Our family is our top priority. So like one of the things Ariana and I do is we have a, a meeting every single week. And during that meeting, we reflect on, hey, this past week, what went well? We talk about personal life and each business. And then we talk about what challenges came up. And so what this does is it, it allows us to acknowledge our wins. It also mm -hmm. allows us to acknowledge our challenges. And then when we go for the upcoming week, we can then say, what is one thing in personal life and what is one thing in the business that we want to improve? And when we plan the upcoming week, we literally put our calendar up. And the first thing we do on the calendar is we block off our personal time. So like, for example, Ariana really likes to sing. So she joined a choir. So that's blocked out. Um, this year, one of the things I wanted to do is start golfing more. So I joined a golf league. That's blocked out. Uh, we have time with our family. So like Friday nights, our family pizza, and then either game or movie nights. That's blocked out. Um, during the summers, we do Friday family field trip. So we take Fridays off and we just go and have experiences with our kids. That's blocked out. Uh, if we do, we'll do like mom dates or dad dates. We, we block all those things out. And then with the remaining time, now we say, okay, what are we going to do with the business to support our lifestyle? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will plan their business or their job first and plan everything else around that. For us, a key thing with this is that we've got the ability to put our family first, put our priorities first, and then we can weave the business or everything else in to support that. Mm. Yeah, that's a great explanation. Very powerful. People plan work and not even their life, right? The rest just happens. Or what I've seen a lot as well is the entrepreneurs changing a nine to five for what now becomes a six to 9 p.m. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that this is easy. I mean, we, we heard about some of our challenges early on, like when, um, before our daughter was born. So I was working a nine to five, we had our real estate company. So I was on the weekends going out and renovating properties and buying properties. Um, I was also in grad school getting my master's in business management and leadership. So I was taking those classes at night after work. And then we were looking to open our second business, the wine and liquor store. So I was getting up at two in the morning to do the business planning and all of that stuff, finish my homework before I started my nine to five. So mm -hmm. it's not to say that you know, you're not going to have to dip into some of that time, but it's about being intentional because what we found, especially as being parents, it's less about the amount of time we spend with our kids and more about the quality of time. So mm -hmm. that's part of why when we block those things off, even if it's only an hour and like for our kids, like the things that kids remember are like the dumbest things. Like I make up these stupid games with them. Like we have a, we have a king size bed. So we make up just these silly games on that. And one of their favorite things to do is to go play on the comfy bed, which is what we call it. So we'll play these like weird games, but they love it. So if I dedicate an hour to just playing with them, mm -hmm. they remember that more than anything else that we do. So it's about being intentional. And even if you've got a limited amount of time, that's why going back earlier, we said that time study is so important because what most people find when they do this, there's a lot of time that is just kind of dead time or isn't really striving towards or going towards their priorities. But when you swap that out for 
maybe intentional time with your kids, or this is a block of time where I'm going to spend building my business. Mm -hmm. Now, everything is now much more aligned to what you want to have your life and your business look like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to come back to what you said, right? We first plan our own time, our kids time, everything in before we start planning everything else. Uh, pretty much for me, what it means that, preneur, you know, it's actually so easy. It's first comes dad, you know, that preneur. So first being a dad and then being an entrepreneur and not what happens or what you see the most is the other way around. Yeah. And that's that, beautiful. You know, it's, it's great. Like, Anytime someone asks me a question, I got like a million words and then you just summed it up so well there. Dad first, preneur later. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I love it. <laughs> I appreciate that. So you've mentioned this a couple of times, right? Um, spend focus time, focus quality time, uh, creating experiences, right? It's something that I've been after I had my 50 or five interview with Become a Fearless Father with Armando Cruz. Nice. Armando's great. Yeah, that's one of his biggest focuses. One of the biggest things that we spoke about, I'm really working on creating experiences with my kids and my wife. And um, I want to ask you, share a little bit how you go about intentionally creating besides, you know, the the, the small fun stuff that you just asked about um, to spend with your family, with your, your wife and kids. Yeah, so one of the, the key things that it comes down to is figuring out what your family culture is. And um, this is actually, I, I keep going back to this like life planner that we use. This is a key part of that because your culture is really what makes you and your family unique. It comes from like uh, your traditions that maybe you grew up as a kid and it comes from merging that with then your significant other and then also creating new traditions and new experiences. So one of the things that we intentionally spent a lot of time doing was asking, you know, like, what's the purpose of our family and what is that culture that we want to create? Like part of it is like, what are our core values? What do we hold as being important and true to us? And then thinking about, okay, how does that turn into behaviors and things that we actually do? So by doing that, we were able to create a whole list of things that makes our family unique and that we want our family to be. Now, by doing that, we could then start saying, okay, how do we live intentionally with this? And so our, I mentioned our Friday family field trip, that actually came out of this activity because we wanted to give our kids, you know, they go to public school. So we wanted to be able to teach them more about entrepreneurship, more about life and give them experiences outside of that. So we said, you know what, we're going to take every Friday and go do something different with them. And so this could be going to a zoo and teaching them about the animals in real life. This could be going to a museum. This could be going to amusement park. But we're intentionally setting that up because it's part of our core values and wanting to be able to teach our kids what life is really about. Um, it also then comes back to looking at each of our family members and saying, you know, what are the things that this family member enjoys and how can we then give that person more of those experiences? And so we, we actually spend a lot more time than probably most people doing this, but we're being very intentional about understanding not only overall, what do we want our family to look like, but then even individually. So, you know, dad and son dates, dad and daughter dates, mom and daughter dates, mom and son dates. So we're, we're spending a lot of time to figure out how each of those relationships can be nurtured as part of the family, as well as individually and one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Loving this, man. I actually I love the new book title of your book that's going to come out uh, this year, Friday Family Field Trips, man. That's freaking Yeah. You know, it was um it was just an idea that we had as we were talking about this stuff and I'll tell you it's been one of the most amazing things. And uh when when we tell other people about it, you know, one thing and this is a really good topic, we tell other people about that and they're like, "Oh my gosh, you guys are so lucky that you get to do that." And and I I laugh and I say, "No, trust me, there was no luck about this." You know, luck comes from being intentional about what you're doing and then just continuing with it until you make it happen. So years ago, you know, we had planted the seeds and did a lot of this work to now allow us to have this option of being able to do it. And I always tell people, I'm like, look, 
you can be lucky too. You've just got to work on it. Um, and, um, you know, like some people might say, well, I'm, I'm still in a job. I can't take every Friday off and it doesn't have to be every Friday. It can be a couple of hours. Like I said, one of the things we used to do for the longest time was just, um, Friday, uh, movie and pizza night. And one of our traditions was every Friday night, we got a pizza and then we would either play a family board game together or we would watch a movie together. Mm -hmm. And so there's always things you can do. Part of it is just looking at how do we get started, right? How do I take a little piece of something that I want to have in the future and start doing it today? Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the things that we wanted to do years ago was uh, buy a new house. But as we were building the businesses and other priorities came up, you said, we said, you know, we're going to stay in this house for a couple more years, but we want to have more space. So we moved two of our kids into one bedroom and then we created a playroom for them so that we would have more space for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's all these little slices that you can do to get started on the things you want. But most people think that they got to dive in and they've got to wait. The most important thing to do is to say, this is what we want. And what's the first step that we can take to get started doing that? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. That's very powerful. I want to hop back a little bit because you mentioned, right? Um, we determine what's our family purpose. And then we also determine the core values of our family. You're talking about here, of course, um, the husband and the wife coming together with completely different values, and then they have to merge and decide on, okay, what are going to be the core values of the family, right? Yep. Now, I'm coming back to this topic because this is where one of my challenges is lying at the moment is like, okay, how, how do you then come up to make sure that those two different values become one core, one core values for the whole family. Absolutely. And, you know, I'll, I'll say it takes time. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people like we have, we have this two page worksheet and a lot of people, when they, they dive in, they're like, Oh, it's only two pages. We'll knock it out an hour. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, this, this thing could take months and oftentimes even years to complete because it's less about filling in the worksheet. And it's more about having the conversations and getting aligned. So a lot of times when you've got two very different people, you know, one, when you're getting together, you're already starting to merge a little bit of each of your past into one and then create, you know, a new future and a new set of traditions for yourself. But a lot of it comes down to first understanding your own core values. And oftentimes, like in the book, we've got a whole section on this and we give a lot of prompting questions. And part of those prompting questions allow you to each talk about what's important to you mm -hmm. and then figuring out which of those elements then come together to be important for the entire family. And so like, um, for example, one of our first core values that we came up with was do the right thing. And, you know, now other people could say, well, that could be integrity or that could be something else for us. As we we're talking back and forth, what we realized was that in every situation, we want to do what we believe is right. And we also want to raise our kids to do what they believe is right. So that came up through a series of conversations and then do the right thing was really that phrase that meant it for us. And um, the other thing I'll say with core values a lot of people really struggle with these. What core values really are is a filter for you to be able to make decisions. Because when you make decisions, whether you realize it or not, you're going through your thoughts, your beliefs, and you're filtering everything through that to help you make a decision. So when we create core values for you individually, as well as for your family, what you're essentially doing is saying, this is how we make decisions to be in alignment with the life that we want to live and the family mission that we have. So mm -hmm. it really comes down to having a lot of conversations and just going back and forth and figuring out which things really seem right to serve the family. And in some cases it might be heavier from one person's perspective, but at the end of the day, it's got to be something that is beyond just an individual and more so in alignment with what the family wants. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Uh, I made a huge mistake the first time we started talking about core values. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you, 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 you want to share? Mine are awesome. So, go. 
<laughs> yeah. And you know, um, one of, one of the, the best things I can tell people is, you know, people always say, you know, you've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. It's so true. Um, in the books, uh, uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, one of the core principles is seek first to understand. Yep. And that's really what you want to be doing here. You want to first come with curiosity and instead of coming and saying, well, here's what I think you first want to open up and say, you know, like, what do you think? What's important to you? And then you want to dive deeper. You want to inquire, like, tell me more about that. Why do you believe that? Why, why do you think that way? And it's through that deepened understanding that you can get a perspective of where they're coming from. And then you can share your perspective. And if you're leading first by example, by asking and inquiring, oftentimes you'll get that back. And in these types of conversations, that's what you want it to be. It's less about pushing your perspective. It's more about understanding the other person's perspective. And then through that understanding, working together to come up with what these common core values are. No, absolutely. Well explained. I wasn't that far yet in my uh, <laughs> personal development journey. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you know it, right? It's yeah, it, it's challenging. You know that's why a, a lot of people think a lot of these things are one and done, and we're in this like instant gratification society where I want to get things knocked out quick. And you know, one of the things I've really become aware of the last couple of years, especially after leaving my job, was how much we often miss the little things. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, so I I used to not see my kids all week. And so when I started being home, I get to see our kids every morning. Like I take a walk with them every morning. We get to talk. But there was this one moment where I dropped my son off at um, his preschool and we got out of the car and every other parent is there like rushing their kids into class. And my son started reading the license plates. And so mm -hmm. he was reading the letters and the numbers. And my initial reaction was like, all right, well, come on, buddy. We got to go to preschool. And then I stopped and I looked around. And I just saw all these parents rushing their kids, rushing their kids to get to school so they can go to work. And I looked down and my son was learning and looking at license plates and reading letters. And I just enjoyed it. And we went down the entire line of cars with him doing this. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is what life's about. All the stuff that getting caught up in before and like materialistic things and always being busy and always like succeeding for more. Like in that moment, I was like, this is why we do everything we do so mm -hmm. that we can actually be there and be present for moments like this and enjoy our lives. So that was a huge revelation for me a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, one of the things I really started doing a lot was like meditating a lot more. It helped mm -hmm. me kind of free up my mind and then really focus on like what is important and where should my, my time and attention be spent. Mm. And I think it's one of the biggest breakthroughs where so many people are just on the go, go, go that when you can take some time and actually be present with what's going on, especially as a parent, it, it's amazing that what can come from just doing that. Absolutely. Yep. Totally agree there. Um, and time flies. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get to the last question. We talked a little bit about serving, right? So what are some of the things that you do to, to serve your wife? Absolutely. Great question. I love that. And uh, we should all be asking this question to ourselves. <laughs> um, one of the main things I do is to take care of um, the house. You know, so I am the one that cleans the house, does the dishes, and um, make sure that we just have an environment that we have options to do what we want to do. If we want to have friends over, we don't have to worry about cleaning the house. Uh, if we want to be able to go do something with the kids, we can do that. Uh, another thing that was really important was we, especially when we started working together, we figured out that we're on completely different schedules. So I am usually an early riser mm -hmm. and she likes to sleep in. Yet at night, I go to bed earlier and she'll often stay up later. So another thing that I do is I let her sleep in every single day. And so she loves this. She gets her sleep and I get to get the kids up and spend time with them in the morning just as a father and as kids. Mm. Um, another big thing is that I really support and encourage her to do things that she enjoys and some things that she maybe wouldn't do on her own. So for example, she recently, like I've gone to a ton of conferences, uh, business conferences. I'm always looking to learn. 
always looking to meet new people. Uh, but she hasn't really done much of that. But now she's coming into her own and really figuring out what she wants to do and who she wants to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been, you know, really supporting her in going to some of these conferences and she's been able to meet up with friends. She's been able to do a little bit of personal growth on her own and she's been able to spend time on her own, uh, not having to worry about the kids and just being able to go to another city, learn, experience the city, hang out with friends, all of that. So I, I guess what this all really comes down to is that question that you said earlier, like asking, how can I serve you? Mm -hmm. And then actually doing that. Exactly. Great. Great answer for uh, the last question. Um, I must say I got tons of more questions. Um, However, you know, let's let's keep it to about an hour. Um, Last man. And of course, I got to show the banner again. And I got the software. So for the people that want to get in contact more, follow uh, Tom and his wife right there. Now you can see the website and um, Tom, what's, what are other ways of getting in contact with you uh, following your journey to creating every day an even more amazing lifestyle? Absolutely. So Tom and is one of the best places. It's got everything we got going on. Uh, we also have another website called we are lifestyle builders.com. And that website is really focused on anyone that wants to be a lifestyle builder. And so that's where you can find our podcast. Uh, you can actually find our upcoming book, lifestyle builders, build your business, quit your job and live your ideal lifestyle. And, um, so we really built that because Tom and Ariana is more about us and kind of everything we have going on, mm-hmm. but we really built, we are lifestyle builders for that movement and that community of people that are like, I'm going to buck the traditional path. I'm going to focus on my ideal lifestyle and working intentionally on building that. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, I'll make sure that for the people that are listening or watching the replay that that website is also going to be there for you. So, Tom, thanks so much for being on. I had a blast. I learned tons from you. I hope that the people did the same. I'm sure they did. Um, thanks again for being on. Everybody else that has taken the time to listen to us, um, thank you. I appreciate you, and I wish you all the luck, not just consuming what you heard, but actually implementing some of the great golden nuggets that Tom shared during this interview, because if not, then what's the point of sharing all these kinds of things? So good luck with that. And we will talk to each other very soon. Take care. Are you still meeting up with your friends? Now that you're a father, kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends, feeling energetic, happy, and confident, spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams? You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with, and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable, and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.